there's definitely something that stings. These backpacks belong to Malaz and Massa, seven-year-old twins from Duma. They're a little shy, hesitant. Their mother, Umnur, tells us they remember everything vividly. They were hiding in a basement when the alleged chemical weapons attack in Duma took place. They could barely breathe. She felt her body go limp. She clawed her way up, dragging her daughters. But then the other strikes began. We were between two deaths, she remembers, either from the chemical strikes or the others on the rooftop. The smell is still quite strong. These are the things that they weren't able to watch yet. Uh, and look, that's the toy that her daughter hid away to try to keep her safe. And she would tell the toy, you know, you might, you might suffocate, but at least you'll be safe from the bombing. That's how, that's how the kids' minds work. Yesterday they were digging a tunnel for the ants so that the ants wouldn't suffocate, just in case something happened. In another tent, we meet a boy with a jagged scar running across his abdomen from shrapnel. His uncle, who doesn't want to be identified, was among the worst affected in the family in the chemical strike. He says his blood sample was taken the day before. This new camp is inhabited with those who survived the siege of Duma. It's relentless, months-long bombing that drove families underground so that something as simple as feeling the sun on their skin was a luxury. Reem and her family thought there was a lull in the bombing and went outside when she says three airstrikes slammed right next to them. The next thing she remembers is being in the hospital. She had just gotten out of surgery in the hospital when the wounded from the chemical strike, she says, began coming in. The scene was so horrific, she says she forgot her own pain. What she doesn't know, what no one has the heart to tell her, is that her husband is dead.